A well-dressed but slightly nervous-looking young man is sitting slightly awkwardly on a very comfortable-looking couch, gazing at a painting of a beautiful rainforest as he waits for his job interview. At the same time, the receptionist, a middle-aged man with a rather interesting moustache, asks in a friendly, soothing voice, What are your plans for the long holiday season? The young man pauses, and as he continues to look at the painting, he takes a deep breath and breathes out slowly. Funny you should ask, perhaps the rainforest in Brazil. Just thinking about it as I look at that beautiful painting, gives me a feeling of relaxation in my eyelids, that comfortable, tired feeling, a pleasant, heavy sensation. And the more I think about that rainforest, the more I can enjoy that comfort I'm feeling in my eyelids. And the more I can just allow that feeling to multiply, to magnify, and to grow. Siggy, how do you feel today? Your mum asks you as you wake up feeling grumpy. There's no time for breakfast. Two boring half-finished projects are overdue and you have a splitting headache. Everything hurts. Give me a pill. You groan, rolling over and pulling the pillow over your head. Hey doctor, you need to see me right now, cause I'm feeling quite ill. Cause my name is Bill Gonna get a ticket, gonna see a show The boys in the band playing Eskimo Joe Play that funky sound, can you feel my head? Hope I don't fall over cause my name is Fred Hey mister, can you give me a deal? Can it be on credit? Cause my name is Neil Gonna get a ticket, gonna see a show The boys in the band playing Eskimo Joe, play that funky sound, can you feel my head? Hope I don't fall over cause my name is Fred. Give me a red one, 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 give me a big red pill. You hear your mum's soothing voice. Just relax. Take a deep breath and close your eyes. You can hardly believe your eyes. You're on holidays with your best friend. 
in the top story of a plush five-star hotel right on top of a gigantic mountain deep in Brazil. The views of the nearby city are breathtaking and you can see the vast and enormous Amazon River winding slowly into the famous Amazon jungle way down in the distance below. Even from up here the jungle looks huge. You could get lost for weeks in there and you wonder what incredible things are happening down there right now deep in that jungle. You could get used to this kind of lifestyle. Beautiful scenery. No stress. A lot better than so-called reality where you were only yesterday. At least there's nothing back in cuckoo land that can't take care of itself. Well, maybe a couple of vexing little issues that need to be resolved, but they can wait for a week or two. You know someone who knows everything about everything, and you can get their advice when you get back. But right now, there are more interesting things to do, and perhaps the answers to those pesky questions can come to you later. You lie down and, tired from the long plane flight, you are soon in a deep, relaxing sleep, and before long, you drift into a dream. As you dream of the jungle, you suddenly find yourself floating out of your body, floating out into the room as if on a magic carpet made from helium balloons. Totally relaxed as you look down at your own sleeping body and notice how peaceful it looks. Beautiful, if you don't say so yourself. Like a sleeping baby without a care. The jaw is relaxed. The shoulders are hanging loosely. The arms and the legs are draped like soft string and the lower abdomen is rising and falling in a very slow, rhythmical cycle, slowly breathing in, slowly breathing out, slowly breathing in, slowly breathing out, totally relaxed. Suddenly you realise where you are, daydreaming in the middle of a dream, and you jump back into your body. The irony of dreaming while you're dreaming is not lost on you. That was fun though. Must do it again sometime. But right now, you'd rather go back to the more interesting dream. The one about the Amazon jungle. And you wonder what amazing adventures are waiting for you. And what interesting things you will learn. You expect that the vivid smells, sights and sounds of the vegetation and wildlife in the most beautiful jungle in the world will be deeply relaxing transforming you into a deep, dreamlike state where you lose consciousness of your body and become totally engrossed in your fantastic surroundings. Your friend taps you on the shoulder. Wake up! Open your eyes! You open your eyes with a yawn and smile when you realise you had completely dozed off. Your friend invites you to go window shopping downtown, but you decide to clear your head 
and take a long, refreshing walk deep into the Amazon jungle instead. You put a few provisions into a backpack and take a very slow and relaxing ferry boat ride along the Amazon River. The scenery is breathtaking and you relax as you enjoy watching the exotic birds and plants that you can almost touch as you move slowly along the edge of the river. Just relax. Eventually, the ferry boat drops you off at a small landing right on the edge of the jungle. You look around and see a well-worn track leading deep into the jungle. And right beside the track, you notice a small white sign with bright red writing. Deep Trail Warning this trail goes deep, deep into your unconscious mind. Take the phone off the hook and turn off mobile phones. They disturb the wildlife. Suddenly the sign starts to grow bigger and bigger and bigger. And then you realize the jungle is also growing bigger at the same rate. You look around and realize you have floated out of your body again. And what is really happening is that you are shrinking. But only the floating part of you is shrinking. As you continue to shrink, you look around 
and you can see your own body that you have just left. It's enormous and seems to be growing as well. You notice your body looks totally relaxed, expressionless, perfectly symmetrical, just staring at the sign. The floating you looks around and notices a crystal clear pool of water and everything around it is reflected like a mirror. The floating you looks into the mirror pool and sees nothing. You have no reflection. All of a sudden, the floating you turns into a tiny owl as small as a speck of dust and dives into the giant body staring at the sign. Recovering from the shock, you quickly open your eyes and see that you have arrived at a place deep inside the jungle and you are walking along a slowly narrowing but well-trodden path. The ground feels as soft as sponge rubber underneath your feet and as you look way ahead you can see the track winding deeper and deeper into the beautiful green landscape. After a few steps, you suddenly feel a change, like walking from a busy street into an incredible shop in a tourist village. You hear a little bell tinkle as you open the door. The shop is full of intoxicating incense, magical coloured crystals, entrancing sitar music, an exotic silk clothing of amazing beauty. It's another world and time stands still. You walk to the back of the shop very slowly, breathing slowly, trying to make this beautiful feeling last as long as possible and you see a deep black silk curtain right across the back of the room. Intrigued, you walk closer to it, and now all you can see is deep black as you listen to the hypnotic drone of the sitar and smell the lovely musky incense. And you close your eyes and imagine yourself meditating in an idyllic yoga ashram in India. Slowly you open your eyes and put out your hand to touch the silk curtain. It's so smooth and soft it could be butter. Suddenly an amazing thing happens. The curtain splits and gently melts apart as you watch yourself step through the opening and onto a track leading deep into a now totally enchanted rainforest. You look at yourself trudging along like a zombie on remote control with a totally expressionless face and you feel sorry for yourself. Sorry that you can't see these incredible surroundings. Slowly, a gentle smile appears on your face as you go back into yourself. And now you can marvel at the sights and sounds and smells around you. You breathe slowly and deeply enjoying the cool, fresh air and soon you are in a deep trance with your body on autopilot as you walk deeper and deeper into the mysterious jungle. Can you hear a bell tinkle 
so clear inside your head you know it's not real but that doesn't really matter now that's how you feel listen to the sound of the sitar as it hypnotizes you this So bright, deep in your mind, it's crystal clear, and you know it's only a dream, but that's all right. Listen to the sound of the city. Feel the silk touching your skin Color so deep Too good to be true But you still Try to believe You know You want to Listen to the sound Of the sitar the door blacker than black even deeper in your unconscious mind it's time for you to explore it now see what you can find ow you hear a cry, and now you realize it's from you. You've stubbed your toe on a tree root, and it gives you a sharp pain that quickly goes away. As you keep walking, you notice a curious thing. Your feet are lifting over the tree roots, as if by magic. They seem to have learnt from the experience. That's interesting. The air is getting a little cooler now, as you notice the trees are as wide as a house and growing. They are getting very, very big and incredibly tall. You look toward the sky and the tree trunks seem to disappear into the distance above you higher than the tallest buildings in the world. You imagine yourself as a tree growing in the rainforest, and as the hustle and bustle of everyday life is all around you, you just calmly take your time to grow slowly and gradually up to the glistening light overhead. Ignoring the busy insects, and little animals with their fast-beating hearts, growing more secure, calmly growing for thousands of years, taking it easy, growing comfortably, watching insects and animals come and go, watching seasons come and go, growing old and peaceful, learning how remaining calm leads to being content. The sky is almost completely hidden by a blanket of vines and canopy growth high up in the treetops, and as you stare upwards you can see some monkeys 
running above the canopy and swinging from branch to branch. They are so high up, you can only just hear their chattering and squeals as they forage for food. You wonder to yourself, are they a long way up or am I a long way down? You imagine what it would be like to be a young forest monkey getting used to the forest for the very first time, getting used to jumping and playing, getting used to climbing trees and having fun, climbing all the way up to the top of the canopies and playing with your friends and enjoying the amazing view, relaxing and doing things like looking for food without thinking, feeling safe high up in the trees, just swinging from branch to branch, learning how to relax and just enjoy life.
and there and everywhere you can be so happy like a wild thing just floating Takes you and a little child can wonder if you can get what you want. Now as you walk along, you are more aware of the canopy of growth under your own feet. Maybe this is how the monkeys up there feel. The track has gradually disappeared and the ground is covered with thick spongy vines and you feel almost weightless as you continue walking. Now that there is no track, you wonder where you are going. So you look around for a landmark or something to guide you. Everything looks the same in almost every direction, but you can see that a small round section of the canopy above you looks a little brighter. That must be the direction of the sun. The air seems filled with a magical twilight, like wearing sunglasses on a warm, sunny day. Your eyes relax completely and everything looks crystal clear. The monkeys chatter in the canopy above. Beautiful, exotic, brightly coloured birds in low branches close enough to touch sing amazing tunes. Rainbow coloured butterflies flit silently through the air. Exquisite native flowers show off incredible shapes and colours that you have never seen before. And everywhere you look, enormous tree ferns wave elegantly on the trunks of more than 2,000 year old rainforest trees the size of skyscrapers. It's almost too much to believe as you slowly spin around and around like a revolving door with your mouth hanging open and you think, wow. As you spin around, something catches your eye. It's a small pygmy boy hiding behind a tree and he's smiling in amusement as he watches you going around in circles like a kitten chasing its tail. You laugh when you think how funny it must look. You wave to the little boy and he waves back. And before long, you are talking to each other with simple sign language and he agrees to walk with you. You wonder what it would be like to be born and raised in the rainforest as a pygmy, just living a simple carefree life, close to nature, looking for food, playing with your friends and living in a happy little village where everybody knows everybody and everybody looks after each other. I can't stop smiling and the whole world is so in love with you I'm a fool under your 
spell As I get lost in your eyes This will last forever And I'm drunk upon your lips of wine And dreams that fill me up With sweet memories of you Stop smiling and the world is full of roses Can't stop smiling and the world's in love with you And now I can't stop smiling The world's in love with you No I can't Stop smiling, the world's in love with you Can't stop smiling, and the whole world is so in love with you There are flowers in my heart, and a rainbow in the sky Don't pinch me now, I don't wanna wake up Please let me be Floating endlessly A fool in love with you Can't stop smiling and the world is full of roses Can't stop smiling and the world is full of roses Smiling, the world's in love with you The little boy seems to know which way to go So you follow his lead Soon you find yourself on a very narrow track Winding slowly up a hill the track looks like it's meant for a very small animal, but you go along it anyway, in single file, with the small boy leading. The track gets steeper and steeper, as you forge deeper and deeper into the jungle, which is gradually getting denser and darker. The canopy overhead is so dense now that it seems like night time, but you can still see by the small speckles of light shining like stars through the canopy. And you think to yourself, this must be blacker than pitch black in the middle of the night. Now the canopy is getting brighter as a hole appears on its horizon. The hole slowly gets bigger and bigger and slowly moves overhead as everything gradually gets brighter and brighter and the little boy starts to get excited as you approach a small clearing on the top of the hill with light streaming down from above. Now you can see tiny huts and as you enter the clearing you see that the people even the adults are all very small. They are pygmies, all of them no bigger than the little boy. 
Everybody seems friendly and trusting, and the little boy takes you to meet his parents. The streets are really just wide paths, but everything is neat and tidy, and the people look happy and healthy as they smile and wave at you. After a few minutes, the little boy takes you through a small door into a tiny hut with a thatched roof and bark walls about the size of a children's cubby house. Amazingly, as soon as you step inside, the space opens up into a huge room with doors leading to other rooms. The little boy shouts a greeting and suddenly about seven little pygmies come into the room, followed by two dogs, a cat and two pet parakeets. They all stare at you inquisitively and you notice that two of them look older than the others. The older couple both give a nod and all the young ones leave the room. And after a few seconds, the little boy comes back with four plates of freshly sliced mangoes. The little boy joins you and the parents for a delicious meal of sweet tangy fruit while the little boy talks to his parents about his adventure. As you listen, you realise you can understand what they are saying. Their language reminds you of a language you used to speak years ago, and the similarities are remarkable. You think to yourself, what a fantastic place! Your new friends invite you to stay the night, and of course you accept. This is like a holiday within a holiday. Just what you need, and you look forward to a really good night's sleep. Just before bedtime, the sound of gentle drumming fills the air, a beautiful, relaxing rhythm, like a slow, resting heartbeat. As you listen carefully, you can hear the sound repeating from hilltop to hilltop, like a fading echo into the distance. Your pygmy friends notice you listening and answer your unasked question. It's a message to the mountain king, passed on from tribe to tribe, telling him that all is well. He's very busy running the jungle kingdom, but he likes to listen to the evening news to make sure everyone is happy. We've just moved further into the jungle to avoid the burning and clearing by new farmers. So hopefully our relocated village is safe now. The friendly pygmies show you to a special guest bedroom with a big soft bed, with big soft pillows and warm blankets, and you lie down. You feel sorry for the poor pygmies being forced to leave their homes and move their disrupted families deeper into the jungle and you suddenly feel homesick and dream about being back home with your family. But the soothing drumbeat soon takes you into a deep, relaxing sleep. My sweetest one, there must be
The sound of twittering birds wakes you, and now you can feel the early morning sun gently warming your face. You take a deep breath as you open up your eyes and see light streaming through a big picture window, and the room is full of coloured rays, shimmering like fairy dust in the air. You yawn and stretch as you take another big breath and notice that you feel totally refreshed and revitalized. You can hear some quiet talking in the room next door, so you quickly get dressed and investigate. It's the Pygmy family having breakfast and they invite you to join them for eggs and toasted muffins. You all enjoy a small but very nutritious meal and everyone is given a fresh peach and a bottle of fresh spring water to take to school or work. The kids all head off on their short walk to school. Mother Pygmy rides her bicycle to town where she works restoring old furniture. Father Pygmy is a carpenter, but when business is quiet, he does some part-time work delivering messages. He loves this job because every day is different. This morning he has a special message for the king and asks you if you would like to come along. I'd love to, you reply without hesitating. What's the message? In the distance you can hear the soft drum beat from last night starting up again, but this time it has a slightly different rhythm, not quite as relaxing and happy as before. Before you get a chance to ask, Father Pygmy tells you that the drum message means that another area of forest, and also one of the newly built huts on the edge of the village, has just burnt down. Starving farmers have continued clearing large sections of the forest to grow crops and the pygmies have been openly rebelling against the government for allowing this to happen. The hut belonged to Father Pygmy's friend, a blue-haired pygmy, and Father Pygmy has been given the job of rebuilding it. But first, Father Pygmy's friend wants the king to send some of his foot soldiers to help with the building work. Father Pygmy has been asked to pass on a personal message to the king from the increasingly rebellious Pygmies. When I was young I used to walk through fields of gold I was so proud of Beautiful country with trees of green and forests full of biodiversity. What have you done? Oh, my beautiful country Where 
Father Pygmy has already prepared a backpack with enough provisions to last several days. And you follow as he strides purposefully out the door, heading in the direction of a large mountain in the distance. Soon you are out of the village and back in the jungle, and now it's your turn to lead. Father Pygmy tells you to head for some glistening rocks in the distance. They are at the opening of the king's palace, a huge mountain cave. As you disappear into the jungle, it seems like you are stepping into a darkened room and closing the door behind you. The light suddenly fades as the dense canopy of vines and vegetation now completely envelops the space around you in every direction. And it seems like night time. As your eyes adapt to the dim light, you can see the trees are incredibly big and tall enough to reach the clouds. You trek for hours and hours, going deeper and deeper into the jungle, guided by instinct in the direction of the king's palace. Then the track gets steeper 
and steeper, and gradually the canopy above gets thinner and brighter. And after what seems like forever, you finally arrive at the mouth of the mountain cave. This looks like a magical place, with all the rock surfaces made from shiny limestone embedded with a myriad of bright coloured crystals and gemstones. You accompany the father pygmy into the cave, which opens up into an enormous chamber with thousands of beautiful coloured crystals growing like stalactites from the walls and ceiling. A sign says, waiting room, and there's a very long bench seat beside the wall at the edge of the cave, with a huge row of pygmies sitting with their arms crossed, and they all have handwritten notes and are holding cards with appointment numbers on them. After a little while, a strange-looking time machine materialises, and a pompous little man, dressed in a rather fancy, bright red jockey's uniform, climbs out and says in a loud, official voice, Appointments, please. I'm with him, you hear yourself say, pointing at Father Pigney. I haven't got one, but it's urgent, says Father Pigney, and the pompous official takes you both straight through to the king's personal assistant. Just call me P.A., says the king's personal assistant, who is very well spoken and quite elegantly dressed in a magnificent green silk three-piece suit, complete with a bright yellow daffodil in the lapel. She continues, How can I help? Father Pygmy reaches into his pocket and hands a small parcel to P.A., P.A. opens up the parcel and uncovers a tiny message recorder and a handwritten message. The recorder has two dials, labelled audio and feeling. P.A. puts on a pair of headphones and closes her eyes. She feels and hears a very strong, loud message. It's a recording of pain on an endless loop and the volume on both dials is turned all the way up to ten. The look of pain on P.A.'s face is plain to see as the loud, painful and very annoying recording goes on and on in an endless cycle. On and on. On and on. Suddenly P.A. opens her eyes and says, This is not useful at all, and unceremoniously wipes the message. Then she turns both volume selectors all the way down, past zero, and locks them in the off position, and announces in a loud, pompous voice, as if making a royal decree, This will not happen again. Ever. These types of rude messages are now permanently banned. All complaint messages are now confined to only one polite handwritten note per incident. After thinking for a moment, P.A. adds, If it's urgent, send an email. Now P.A. turns her attention to the handwritten note, muttering to herself, This better be important. She composes herself, reads the message, and then puts her hand into a big box marked Solutions. After a while, she takes something out of the box and says, This should fit. Take this and off you go, and hands a folded piece of paper to Father Pygmy. Thanks, Ms. P.A., says Father Pygmy, and you both turn around 
and begin the long journey back to the village. As you go back through the waiting room, you notice the long bench seat is completely empty. So you ask the pompous official why. He replies, because I sent them home. They were all whinging about nothing. This makes Father Pygmy a bit curious and he decides to look at P.A.'s message. He opens it up and it reads in capital letters, Fix your problems yourself. Then, in very small print underneath, I decree the neighbours must help. By order, the king. The king is very lucky to have someone as good as P.A. to do all his thinking for him. You remark to Father Pygmy as you leave the dark cave and emerge into the bright sunlight. As you look back, you can see the mouth of the cave sparkling like jewels in the evening sun. You turn around and start walking down the steep track and almost immediately you are back inside the deep, mysterious jungle. It seems like night has suddenly returned as the familiar dense, dark canopy envelops you again like an unborn baby and you close your eyes and feel yourself shrinking smaller and smaller smaller and smaller now you're curled up and sucking your thumb you're totally protected just sleeping and relaxing oblivious to the world it's nice and warm and all you can hear is your own heart beating. As you listen to the rhythm of your heartbeat, you realize it sounds familiar. Can you hear that? You ask Father Pygmy. Yes, let's see where it's coming from, he replies. You both head off in the direction of the distant drumbeat. It's getting warm now but suddenly a brief rain shower fills the air and then, just as suddenly, it disappears and you are cool again and all the trees and their leaves are covered with tiny sparkling droplets of water. The ground is cool and damp and now you can hear the sound of flowing water. You investigate and see a small rocky valley almost completely hidden by large ferns hiding a loudly bubbling mountain stream. As you follow the stream you come to a little rock pool with crystal clear gently bubbling water. The water looks very cool. I'm going to wet my feet says Father Pygmy and you decide to join him. Suddenly, you both slip in, and before you know it, you are swimming around like a fish. You dive deep under the water, and you can see slowly waving underwater plants as you glide through the water effortlessly and feel the current flowing. Feel the gentle sensation of water on the side of your body. And now you feel totally relaxed, a heavenly feeling, almost spiritual, as if floating out of your body, surrounded by an aura of beautiful crystal clear water, sparkling with every colour of the rainbow in the healing rays of the sun. is shining a certain way and you become detached and see your own body a few feet away sitting peacefully surrounded by beautiful colors surrounded by beautiful
beautiful colors And all the auras around you are dimensions of you And you can feel a connection in space and time To all the ascended masters All the ascended masters In heaven filled with healing colors If only you accept their love Perhaps you can see Jesus or Buddha As you float away Or the Master Lady Nada with you Ascended Masters are smiling and offering you the gift of truth and wisdom and you can feel their unconditional love Unconditional love In heaven filled with healing colors You can Accept the gift of love And Saint Germain the healer is protecting you Transmuting negativity to positivity In a purple and golden aura A purple and golden aura And a deep blue cloak of protection is covered So peacefully, all your beautiful colored auras are gliding in, merging perfectly, healing your every dimension, your world's filled with purple and gold, you can accept its peace and You look around, but you don't have to move your head. You've got almost 360 degree fish eye vision. And as you look up, you can see the distortion of outside reality. But below the water, everything looks clear as you swim around effortlessly. Now you come to a waterfall and you dive down letting the current take you down, deep, deep into your own unconscious mind. And you just relax and go with the flow. Nothing is real. Now you know what it feels like to be a fish. And you feel refreshed and relaxed. You come up and take a deep breath as your head emerges from the water. The stream has taken you for quite a long journey and both you and Father Pygmy have arrived at another rock pool in a new strange place. You step up and out of the water and immediately find yourself in a small clearing beside the stream. And as you look around, you see you are surrounded by a dozen green-haired pygmies with spears. You look at Father Pygmy, but he doesn't look worried. He starts to talk to the green-haired pygmies, and they tell him that they are out collecting logs and vines to repair some of the huts in their village. The green-haired pygmy says, We need some help from the king. Father Pygmy replies, 
He's not far from here. We'll take you there so you can ask him personally. But it has to be important. It is, says the green-haired pygmy. But first, we have to have lunch. You are finishing a delicious plate of yam sandwiches when Father Pygmy says, Let's go. Places to meet. People to see. As you get up to join him, the head, green-haired pygmy, hands you a long red scarf and a pair of goggles and says, Walk this way. You and Father Pygmy follow him as he saunters elegantly up the street and around the corner. And there, in a vacant paddock, is a miniature tiger moth biplane built for two. He tells you, it's perfectly safe. You can sit on top. A sign on the cockpit says, flying and rock climbing do not mix. Bombs could also be a problem. Now you know what an eagle feels like. If you thought being a fish was good, this is something else again. Strapped onto the roof of the tiger moth, you soar up through the clouds like a bird. The wind is streaming through your hair and you can feel it lifting you higher and and higher, and you feel completely free as you watch the earth below you looking like a giant green saucer with a map painted on it. You can see the sparkling rocks of the King's Mountain Cave growing bigger, and you are now getting closer and closer to your destination. Suddenly the engine splutters and stops. Whoops! Forgot to fill up the fuel tank, says the head green-haired pygmy. The tiger moth glides for a few minutes, then swoops downwards and quickly lands in a clearing beside the king's cave. You all clamber to the ground safely. I told you it was safe, says the head green-haired pygmy. Hello, hello, hello. You hear a loud voice, and you look up to see a very tall armed foot soldier looking splendid in a royal blue uniform, complete with white buttons and a very big gold and silver helmet, like the ones worn by the Swedish royal guards. He's the head soldier, and he's got half a dozen burly assistants, also dressed in blue. And you're under house arrest. The soldiers frog march you deep into the king's cave and take you straight to the king's royal chamber where the king is sitting on his throne drinking a cup of tea. Three murderers, your majesty, announces the tall head soldier proudly in his loudest voice. You look at the three foot soldiers who are holding you and think to yourself, I thought there were six soldiers. Sometimes it's hard to tell what's real and what's imagined these days, remarks the king, almost as if he knew what you were thinking. There's a long pause, and then, looking curiously at you, the king asks, Tell me about all the fantastic things you've been doing today. Your Majesty, how long do you want them locked up in the royal dungeon? asks the head soldier, this time in a more polite voice. All night, and then hang them at dawn, exclaims the king, and then give them the third degree. Where are my missing soldiers? They must know something. It's time you gave an answer. And the truth cannot be bent, said the hangman to the blind man.
as he took his measurement. Freedom's just a state of mind, the prisoner returned. My friend, I will be silent until that lesson's learned. Sentimental, his inquisitor replied. Tell me where the body's hid and why the witness lied. Well, it doesn't really matter now. The suspect spoke at last. Justice is blind, and from what I can see. Your Majesty, what if they know nothing? asks the head soldier. Well, it depends on how many funny jokes they know. They can have their sentence suspended by one minute for each funny joke, exclaims the king. The two pygmies are in their element and start trying to outdo each other with their funny stories and both are getting a few chuckles. Father Pygmy announces, A brunette, a redhead and a greenhead are in jail when they decide to break out. The girls break out and the brunette says, Let's hide in that barn. They'll never find us. So they climb up the ladder and then the greenhead throws it down. The next morning, the police find their tracks leading to the barn and the sergeant says, Come out with your hands in the air. The redhead says, Hide in those baskets. They'll never find us. So the brunette gets in the first one. The redhead gets in the second one. And the greenhead gets in the third one. Meanwhile, the police are getting the ladder set up and trying to get up there. Once they get up, the sergeant orders them to kick the baskets. So the constable kicks the first one. Rough! It's just a damn dog, yells the constable. The constable kicks the next one. Meow! It's just a damn cat, 
yells the constable. The constable kicks the third basket and the greenhead yells, Potatoes! The greenhead pygmy is not amused. Finally, he says, Have you heard the one about the guy on safari hacking his way through the jungle when he comes across a clearing and sees a dead elephant and a three foot six inch pygmy standing next to it, looking really pleased with himself? The guy asks him if he has killed the elephant, to which the pygmy replies, Yes. The guy then asks him how he killed it, to which the pygmy replies, With my club. The guy then asks him how big his club is, to which the pygmy replies, Well, there are 120 of us in it. The king falls off his throne laughing and declares, You are all pardoned. The green-haired pygmy asks in a hopeful voice, Please, your royal tallness, can you help us? Our whole tribe is too short and we need more food so we can grow to a bigger size. The king says, Let me tell you a little story. It's about a young pygmy prince who was worried because he thought he wasn't growing fast enough. No one could cheer him up and each day as he worried about his terrible problem he felt worse and worse. He couldn't sleep properly and kept having bad dreams about shrinking and being squashed into a matchbox. Then one night he had a different dream. He dreamed he saw a calendar and that it was one year into the future. He could also see his own body and he had grown to a normal size. And now he was completely happy. How did I do that? he wondered. And then he saw himself writing the answer on a piece of paper. The king pauses dramatically. What did it say? Everyone wants to know. Sighing, the king replies, I don't know. The prince woke up before he could read it. But what's the ending? You ask impatiently. That's the whole story, the king replies indignantly. More like the story has a hole in it, someone mutters under their breath. I heard that, exclaims the king. The pardons are retracted. After a pause, he says, Well, maybe I'll let you off this time if you listen to another story. The king continues, showing off a big scar on his arm. Once upon a time, I was wounded in battle, defending my castle from invaders. The invaders were beaten, of course, and the kingdom was safe again. My wound healed and felt fine, but my messengers kept telling me to hide it. And finally I told them to be quiet until they had something important to say. I suppose you heard it all before Our religion always leads to war But greed and envy are idols of the sword Your chosen road is made But you walk the line In between women and wine And still you seek the answer in the Lord Praise the Lord I know you will find him Praise the Lord Praise the Lord Praise the Lord Long live the King, the King is dead You wear the crown but your hands are red And there's nothing that what you stole it dawns You have the gold and wealth untold But in your palace the rooms are cold And now you see your crown is made of thorns Well way before I saw you Mary wept and Joseph too Was overcome with infinite sadness Now your friend is gone But the truth lives on 
With Matthew, Mark, and Luke and John, it's time for you to deal with the madness. Praise the Lord. I know that you are finding praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I warned you twice You simply had to throw the dice But life will always test your spinal cord You close your eyes Say your last goodbyes Invent a bunch of little white lies And still you hope for answers from the Lord Praise the Lord I know that you will find him Praise the Lord Praise the Lord Praise the Lord From anointed one to homeless tramp Now it's your turn to light the lamp For the pleasure of the one you call the Lord Your gold is lost You face the cost All your friends are double-crossed And now you need some help from the Lord Praise the Lord I know that you will find him Praise the Lord Praise the Lord Praise the Lord Well, that's quite enough idle chat for one day. Let's do something important, announces the king. Who wants to join me for my daily game of cards? I need three volunteers for a few hands of long live the king. That's you and you and you, he says, pointing at you and the two pygmies. Sounds a bit hard. How do you play? Asks Father Pygmy. We'll use house rules. It's easy, really, replies the king. You just put your cards into runs and groups of a kind, and what's left over is your score. Lowest score wins. You start with five cards and get one discard and one pick-up each hand. I can do that, says Father Pygmy, and the game starts with the king keeping score. The green-haired pygmy says, Why didn't the elephant like to play cards in the jungle? Because there were too many cheaters. Father pygmy says, The village witch doctor, Darren, was feeling ill at the clinic and left after lunch to go home. He walked into the house and found his wife, Samantha, in the arms of another man. He started to yell at the interloper. What right have you got to be making love to my wife? The man answered calmly. You may as well know that I'm in love with Samantha and I would like to marry her. I understand you're a gambler. Why don't you be a good sport and sit down and play a game of cards with me? If I lose, I'll never see her again. If you lose, you must agree to divorce her. OK? OK, replied Darren. But just to make it a little more interesting, why don't we play for a penny a point? Everyone is completely engrossed in the game. And after half an hour of intense competition, the scores are almost tied up, with the king and the green-haired pygmy in equal first position. The king announces... I win. An imaginary royal flush beats four of a kind. But that's not fair, complains the green-haired pygmy. House rules apply, replies the king. Do you have computer games, Mr. King? The green-haired pygmy asks politely. Of course, doesn't everyone? What a silly question, replies the king. 
Then he adds, after pausing and looking a bit embarrassed, but the computer's sick and no one knows how to cure it. You hear yourself offering a suggestion. Maybe I can help. I've got a lot of experience with computers. The king and the other two all burst into uncontrolled laughter. The laughing goes on and on. And finally the king, with tears streaming down his face, points at you and splutters, You? You're not even a pygmy! Indignantly you ask, What's actually wrong with your computer? And the king replies, It's got chronic fatigue syndrome, complicated by a bad case of swine flu. The head palace physician is completely baffled. The top consulting doctor of nutritional medicine in the kingdom can't find a problem. And the professor of neurology at the Princess Priscilla Royal Hospital reckons it's a classic case of imaginationitis. Well, that sounds like someone has deliberately tampered with your computer's imagination. There's a lot of that going on nowadays, you know, you remark, and all of a sudden the king looks impressed. He points to a very modern, fancy-looking computer in the corner of the room and says, OK, smarty pants, there it is. Fix it. As you turn on the computer, it begins to whir as it warms up. And all its startup programs launch into action in quick succession, in the exact correct order, as if by magic. You never fail to be amazed by these incredible machines, and you find yourself daydreaming for a moment. You close your eyes and take a deep breath, and you wonder what it would be like to be a computer. You imagine yourself as a modern computer. No stress. No worries. You are able to do anything you want to with absolute ease. You are a million times more powerful than the computer that NASA used to put man on the moon. You are able to play incredible games able to access almost every piece of information recorded by mankind. Billions and billions of facts in nanoseconds. You are limited only by the imagination of your master. You are able to perform amazing mathematical calculations, millions of times faster than Albert Einstein ever could. Imagine the things famous inventors would have discovered if they had a computer like you. And now you imagine you are in a time machine, going back in time. You are in the past, back in the good old days, the time when everything was going really well. And suddenly you realise that you can go back there any time you like, and that you can recreate the way you perceive things, and the way you deal with things and the way you react to situations, so that it feels exactly like it did in those good old days. All you need is a clear memory of how it was, and you can recreate those good days any time you want. I got myself a time machine in 2022 was checking stuff out on the screen That's when I saw you Well, I was pleased to see you If you know what I mean You was looking like a peach In a movie scene Hollywood 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 If she could So I climbed into my new machine to get a better view Took a look at a history book, didn't know what to do I turned on the telly and I saw you again And headed for the USA Hollywood 
Hollywood, Hollywood, if she could. Now when I turned up to your club in 1968, you were nowhere to be seen. They said I was too late. So I set the dial for your next show, but I was out of gas. And my dreams were slipping away Hollywood Hollywood And I would If I could You open your eyes and look at the whirring computer. It's on, but something's not quite right. How can you put it back to the way it was before it was sick? Asks the king hopefully. You answer. Well, imagine if you could go back in time to a particular day when your computer was healthy and happy and doing its work and playing lots of games. I wonder if you can choose which day you want to go back to. That's impossible. The computer needs new parts, the king exclaims. You reply, it works for some people. Why don't you try? It's easy. The king mutters, I suppose I may as well. Anything's possible. And presses a few keys and suddenly the computer is back to normal. The green-haired pygmy has a good memory and asks hopefully, Now can we play some computer games, Mr. King? I suppose so. I've got a new game called The Wizard that you can play if you like. The king loads the game and the green-haired pygmy sits down to play against the wizard. He selects level one, which is entitled, Fix My Problem. The game starts off with a quiz, and the green-haired pygmy is stumped on question one, when the wizard asks, What's the first thing you would say if you were killed by a truck? The green-haired pygmy selects, Ow! Question two is no easier. If you wanted to become a pilot, would you take a crash course on how to fly? The green-haired pygmy selects, pass. At this point, the wizard stops the quiz and says in a slow, deep voice, I notice you're looking a bit green, and it looks to me like you are getting very sleepy and you need some help with your problem. Now here's a voice email I want you to send to yourself at deep deep down at my inner space dot me. Think back to the last time you felt fit and vital. Now fast forward to imagine the possibility of it happening again. And now visualize what's happening deep, deep inside your body as your system works quietly away, restoring itself back to normal. Using the list of instructions you were born with. Now imagine what happens next. The order goes out for a top up of nutrients, especially vitamins and minerals and probiotics to help with the restoration and plenty of pure water and healthy exercise for the cleanup. And then the elimination organs all get started tidying up the mess. They all give a hand 
The heart pumps the blood around, bringing in fresh supplies and taking away the garbage. The lungs bring in oxygen, expel carbon dioxide and help alkalize acids in the body. The digestive tract selects the best nutrients and joins the bladder and the sweat glands all over the body by collecting refuse to be expelled. All you have to do is have a healthy lifestyle without too much stress and your body does the rest, restoring itself to perfect health so you can feel good. A healthy mind in a healthy body. I'm hot and this is boring, mutters Father Pygmy, then adds, Your Highness, do you have a swimming pool? The king replies, Don't be ridiculous, how would that fit in a cave? But I do have an indoor boat, would you like a ride? Wicked, exclaims Father Pygmy, and everyone nods eagerly. The king leads the way, and you all follow, down a long corridor going deep into the mountain. Now the corridor turns into a tunnel, and you start descending on a long downward slope, down and down, into the deepest depths of the mountain. Suddenly the tunnel widens, and you see a small cavern with a bright yellow toy submarine floating in a bathtub filled with bubbling seawater. The king exclaims proudly, Welcome to the royal bathroom, the best room in the palace. Come with me on an imaginary submarine ride. You blink your eyes and look at the toy submarine again, and it has grown to the size of a small car, and the water in the bath has become very deep and frothy. Is it seaworthy? you ask cautiously. The king replies, Of course, I've never been killed yet. You all get on board, and the king closes the hatch. Down periscope, says the king. There isn't one, but no one seems to mind, and the royal submarine dives deep down into the deep blue sea. And as you dive deeper and deeper, you can see colourful little fish and sea creatures through the submarine windows. As you dive even deeper, you can see large expanses of bright green seaweed and other marine vegetation growing, and you can see a few sharks silently patrolling the area. Those are my pet guard dogs, protecting my royal sea garden from invading fish, explains the king. Would you like to dive all the way down to Davy Jones's locker where all the songs are sung by whales down in Davy Jones's locker? Don't be scared to ask for what you want, cause the See is full of mirrors You can see yourself as others do Cause the sea is full of mirrors If pain is the price you have to pay Then there's nothing to give away if fame was your only friend Please accept my condolences They say you can do almost anything down in Davy Jones's locker You can find yourself 
and be free again down in Davy Jones's locker and the beautiful whales sing their songs. The Royal Submarine continues to dive, and now you can see a small shipwreck on the sea floor way down below. Let's take a look, says the king, and as you look down, you can see the wreck looking bigger and bigger as you drop down onto a couple of corroding beams. The submarine settles to a standstill, and now you can see the old shipwreck clearly. Fish are swimming in and out of it, and some have made it their home. The hole has been completely dissolved, and removed by the seawater and the underwater currents. The frame is almost gone, and its few remaining rusty fragments cast an eerie shadow, showing the shape of the once magnificent ship. You can see the ship's engine room has deteriorated, but is still clearly visible. The royal divers have stripped her bare, 
But the engine is still there. I need it for spare parts for the royal yacht. Who wants to help? says the king. Forget it. It looks wet out there, says Father Pygmy. And the green-haired pygmy says, No way! You figure it's up to you to save the day, so you agree to help. The king hands you a pair of flippers and a diving mask and says, See you in a couple of minutes. By the way, I forgot the air tanks. Just hold your breath. You open the porthole in the floor of the submarine and drop into the water and feeling almost weightless, you float down into the wreck. And now you swim into the engine room. The engine is quite light in the water, and its moorings have been dissolved by the sea, and you carry the engine back to the submarine without any fuss. Well done, says the king. Let's go and fix the royal yacht. And you begin the journey to the surface. You rise quickly, and you can see the outline of a boat above you. And now you all bounce to a stop as the submarine pops out of the water right beside the royal yacht.
This time the two pygmies help, as you and the king install the reclaimed engine into the royal yacht. And it's a perfect fit. Let's give it a test, says the king, pressing the start button. Nothing happens. Maybe you have to press the install new hardware button, suggests the green-haired pygmy. The king gives it a try, and it works. The engine of the royal yacht starts up, and it sounds almost brand new. Your Highness, don't you think we would be derelict in our duty if we didn't take her for a little spin? Just to make sure the engine is running properly? The green-haired pygmy asks hopefully. You're absolutely right, of course, exclaims the king. We all deserve some rest and relaxation after all that hard work. The king disappears down a small stairway into the master cabin and re-emerges a few seconds later with a bottle of lemon-flavoured mineral water and four large champagne glasses. The glasses are charged and the king proposes a toast. To me and my merry subjects. The royal yacht is flying over the water like a low-flying bird and you admire the amazing view out on the vast open ocean, feeling a part of the boat and a part of nature as you skim over the wave tops. Your nose cuts into a large wave and then emerges from it, and now some foam spray touches your skin as it flies through the air. Looking from the top of your mast out into the open sea, you can see sets of waves forming, and as you watch the waves come in from the distance, they wash away your worries. You let your mind wander as you admire the peaceful blue sky and bright sunshine. That's right. And as the waves finally reach shallow water, you can see them slowly rise and curl over and crash away your worries, giving a sense of calmness and relief. The Royal Submarine resurfaces without mishap, and you are now back at the Royal Palace with the King and your two pygmy friends. Suddenly you hear the sound of a rock band playing a Love Gone Wrong song written by the court jester called Six Red Roses. I met my love And I gave her a smile I said, come with me And we'll sit for a while So she came with me And we sat for a while And I gave her Six red roses, six blood red roses, six blood red roses. I gave my love six blood red roses. I asked my love, hey, have you been true? I said, I promise you, I've been true to you. She looked at me. And then she said Now why did you give me Six red roses That's blood red roses Six blood red roses Why did you give me Six blood red roses So my love asked me Down to the creek She told me she was true Six days a week We began to fight As she gave me one last look And I gave her Six red roses Six blood red roses Six blood red roses I gave my love Six blood red roses
gave her a smile I said, come with me And we'll sit for a while So she came with me And we sat for a while And I gave her Six red roses It's the royal ringtone, says the king, picking up the phone. The king listens, then speaks to the caller. Sorry to rudely interrupt you, sir, but I don't need a complimentary investment seminar. How did you get my number? The call is on speakerphone, and the caller replies in a strange accent. You're in the royal phone book, your majesty. If you don't want me to call you again, just ask the royal communications department to put you on the do not call me again unless I ask you to register. I might just do that, says the king. He hangs up the phone and says, I feel like I'm being invaded all over again. I'm feeling quite sick with a sore tummy and burning up with a fever. You close your eyes and wonder how you can help and imagine yourself as an antibody or a helper cell, able to go deep inside your own body, right to where the unwanted messages are coming from, hoping to see the problem and fix it. And now you dive deep into your own body, deep inside, getting smaller and smaller, diving deeper and deeper, so deep you can see individual cells. Still, everything seems okay, so you decide to scout around for any little messengers and follow them backwards to see where they are coming from. You dive deep into the muscle fibres and now you can see an electrical wire with protective plastic lining around it, full of busy little messengers with notepads and pencils carrying muscle damage reports to your brain. That's right. Those are the communications you want to trace. So you follow the electrical wire the other way to see where the messengers are coming from. And almost immediately, you see a transparent bucket of fluid around the wire. You see a sign on the bucket saying, In case of muscle damage, make acid. And the bucket is making acid as fast as it can. The lid is off and the bucket is overflowing with hot, steaming acid that looks very strong. You see a dial setting the strength of the acid and it's turned to maximum and the on-off switch somehow has become stuck in the on position and no one is in attendance. You can see that some of the acid has spilt and melted the protective plastic lining around the now hot and steamy wire and the electrochemical reaction is causing slightly confused electrical signals to be sent to your muscles. You look around and see signs of previously damaged muscle fibres that have recently been fully repaired. And now, as you look further upstream, everything looks in perfect order. You look around and see another bucket with a sign saying, Biodegradable Caustic Soda, made from water fresh fruit and vegetables, and healthy exercise, handy for acid spills. You pour some of the fluid in the bucket onto the acid spill, and suddenly the wire cools down, and its lining becomes new and shiny and strong. The strength of the confused electrical signal drops to zero, and you suddenly feel complete relief Sort of like when you drink antacid after getting indigestion. You pinch the electrical wire 
and it feels strong and healthy. And suddenly the muscle can move freely without discomfort. Have you noticed when you're swimming just below the waterline Ideas can be floating in and out of your head. You can be healing deep inside and maybe problems or memories or maybe shades of grey or healing colours, shades of pink or maybe deep purple balloons you can be healing deep inside an amethyst or orange can float inside like sparkling lights and some can be closer and some can be distant in time and that's okay You open your eyes and look at the king, who is sipping on a glass of mineral water and looking much better. Now I get it, says the king. It's time to return to the village and the green-haired pygmy is in the cockpit. He has already put on his flying goggles and scarf and is giving you and father pygmy the hurry up. Is she fueled up? You ask, and are not surprised when the green-haired pygmy answers, Whoops! The king is standing by, ready to see you off, and suggests, Would you like some ginger beer and carrot juice? I'm not really thirsty, says the green-haired pygmy, but the king interrupts him, saying, For the fuel tank, the royal lawnmower loves the stuff. The king summons P.A. to refuel the plane, and while this is happening, the king has another surprise, a gift holiday voucher for the family of the damaged hut, inviting them to come and take a relaxing day trip on the royal yacht. The voucher reads, One relaxing family day trip on the royal yacht. Valid tomorrow. I order you to take it easy. Signed. H.R.H. The fuel tank is now full and you and the two pygmies climb onto the plane and hope for the best. The green-haired pygmy presses the start button and the tiger moth's engine splutters into action. Suddenly the biplane takes off, accelerating strongly 
and you're on your way, flying through the air back to the green-haired pygmy's village. And now you all look back and wave as you see the king and P.A. waving, and you can just hear the king's voice saying, Have a safe trip! The green-haired pygmy has agreed to take you both straight to Father Pygmy's village, and now you can see Father Pygmy's hut. It looks very small from the air. How are we going to land there? asks Father Pygmy nervously. Piece of cake, replies the green-haired pygmy confidently. The tiger moth touches down, skidding and bouncing, and jolts to an unceremonious stop in the middle of Father Pygmy's vegetable patch. Another safe trip, says the green-haired pygmy. Let's get to work, says Father Pygmy, and jumps out of the plane and heads straight for the blue-haired pygmy's damaged hut. You are all surprised to see a few other neighbours are already there and the repair job is almost done. They all look very happy with themselves and one of the neighbours says, We saved the roof for you, Father Pygmy. Mother Pygmy and the pygmy kids are also there helping and Father Pygmy walks over and greets them. You smell nice, Father Pygmy says to Mother Pygmy. It's vanilla, says Mother Pygmy. My favourite flavour, says Father Pygmy. Father Pygmy gives the King's gift voucher to the blue-haired Pygmy. The blue-haired Pygmy says to you and Father Pygmy, Tell the King we appreciate his gift. You reply, we don't have to, he already knows. 
you feel a tap on the shoulder and hear a gentle voice. It's your mum. Wake up, sleepyhead. It's time to get up and go to school. This had better be part of the dream. Well, it is, sort of. It's your best friend pretending to be your mum. Siggy, how do you feel? Asks your mum as you wake up. Fantastic. I feel like I've got a new body, you reply. Something she said to me so late last night Took all my fears away Something that she said last night Something is telling me I won't get hurt Well that could be years away Something that she said last night Last night Last night Last night Last night Something that she said last night I'm a new man, there is no pain Something she said last night Something that she said last night I'm a new man, I don't need to fight Something she said last night Something that she said last night Something she said when I was feeling sad Took all my tears away Something that she said last night Something she said when things were turning bad Showed me a better place Something that she said last night Last night Last night Last night Last night Some things your mind can change And some things can change your mind You open your eyes. Where do you live? Asks the receptionist with the interesting moustache. Malagu Creek. It goes for miles and miles, and the views are out of sight, says the young man. Sounds beautiful, says the receptionist. I'm very lucky, says the young man. Well, Mulligan Creek is way up in the sky It's gotta be the place to be for flying like a kite That's right That's right Here I'm a lucky man cause I'm living where I am That mountain there can surely get your head feeling light That's right That's right Mulligan Creek is the place to be. Mulligan Creek is the place to be. Mulligan Creek's where I wanna. Mulligan Creek goes for miles and miles, telling you the views are out of sight. That's right. That's right. We could take a ride to the mountain top. 
parking up some track in the middle of the night. That's right. That's right. Well, check out my eyes when you twist and shout. Yeah, everything is hunky as long as you don't bite. That's right. That's right. You get me feeling funny when you move that way. Do you want to do the do do do? I think that I just might. That's right. That's right. Mulligoo Creek is the place to be. Mulligoo Creek is the place to be. Mulligoo Creek's where I wanna 